So next, let's talk about financial derivatives. Now in the following, um, we'll talk about uh, options and uh, even simpler types of financial derivatives. Now options are an example of um, a conditional uh, asset or bedingtes Wertpapiergeschäfts. Um, why? Um, well, it depends on your decision uh, as an owner, if you want to exercise your option, your right or not, or if, it'll, if not. Um, we'll also look at futures and forwards, um, and actually this is explained in much, much details uh, also in the lectures by Professor Schumacher. This is also done in computational finance, um, so you might have seen this before, but nevertheless, I want to discuss this here in detail because I think uh, this needs to be done in financial risk management. Now, um, what is an option? We first repeat the definition. An option is a security that certifies the right to buy or sell a certain underlying at a later date at an agreed price. Thus, it's a conditional transaction in the future, depends on whether you want to exercise your option. And physical settlement is usually not required. In most cases, in rather than physical settlement, we have so-called cash settlement, when the writer of the option pays the buyer, or vice versa, the difference in price at maturity, when the option is exercised. Now, we have different types of options. Uh, we have European, American and Bermudan options. And an option is called European if the option can be exercised only at the end of the option term at maturity. Um, or it's called American if it's it can be exercised at any time. Or Bermuda, the Bermudan Islands, is uh, they are right between America and Europe. So if it can be exercised exclusively at certain points of time. So these three types of option, options do we have. Um, we can distinguish between call and put options. Those are the plain vanilla ones um, and uh, long and short positions. And an important criterion to differentiate between different types of options is the corresponding payout profile of the option. And in the next chapter, uh, we'll have a look at those payout profiles of some selected options and we'll see how these options can be priced. So we'll start with the very, very simple plain vanilla European call and put options. Uh, ST is the price of the underlying at any time T. K is the strike price for which you can exercise the option. And capital T is the term or expiration date. Then the payout profile at maturity for a European call long is the maximum of S capital T minus K or zero. And for a put it's maximum of K minus ST or zero. So what this means is that you would, if you were, or no, if you see that the price of the stock is higher than the current, uh, than the strike, you would make a profit from exercising the option, so you exercise the option. If vice versa, the strike is higher than the current stock price for a long call, you would make a loss if you were to exercise the option, so you let it expire. That's when you get zero. But you would never lose money from exercising or not exercising the option. So this means that at maturity, you would get the maximum of the two. The difference between the strike and the underlying price and zero. Now, um, this um, the call and the put, they are two examples of what we call plain vanilla options. Now, in contrast to plain vanilla options, we also have so-called exotic options, exotische option. And um, as a first group of exotic options, we define these so-called power options. And power option is an option whose payout is given in powers of the strike or the underlying price. For example, the asymmetric power call is the maximum of zero or the uh, um, underlying price taken to the power of n minus the strike taken to the power of n. 
The asymmetric power put is quite similar. We also have a symmetric power call. That is, if the um, underlying price is smaller or equal to the strike, um, we would get zero. And otherwise, we get the difference between the two taken to the power of n. So it's symmetric in the sense. And we can also save a self-quantal call, which is a call the payout profile of a call times um, the underlying price itself. So this is uh, a payout that can be actually quite high. Um, you might ask yourself if the payout profile is so much higher for a self quantal call than for a regular call, why should I buy a call? Well, these are only, and let's make this very, very clear, all these payouts here, they are in capital T. It's only in capital T. The question is, what is the price in... Okay, this seems to be some... What is the price in T equal to zero? And a self quantile a self quanto call will be much much more expensive than a regular plain vanilla call so that's why you can define any type of payout profile this will only make the option more expensive or cheaper for the investor it depends on the payout profile now next group of exotic options so called click it options a click it option is an option with several exercise dates at which the strike is reset to the currently valid underlying price. That's the reset. The payments are made either directly or compounded to the last due date. And as an example, we have a click at call, which pays you the maximum of zero. ST dash minus strike discounted. Um, actually, no, not discounted, but compounded plus the maximum of zero and the final underlying price minus the stock price at t dash that is the reset date so actually we take the first payment we got when the price was reset we have to compound it and then the next payment is um, the call that is reset and this is the former strike k okay then we have a cube option. A cube option is an option with several exercise dates at which the strike is reset to the currently valid underlying price or the original strike price, uh, whichever is less favorable for the holder of the option. So they should be cheaper than a click it option. So a cube call is the maximum of zero, st dash minus k, compounded plus the maximum of zero st minus and now we would have the strike and we take the maximum of the reset underlying um, no the uh, strike original um, the original strike and the reset strike which was set to the underlying price at the reset date whichever is more uh, no less favorable to the option holder and thus we take the maximum next we take the so-called look back options a look back option is an option where the holder has the option to choose the price of the underlying or strike from past values so that his payout profile is optimal. For example, a minimum strike call that is um, the underlying price at maturity, ST, minus the minimum of the underlying price in between or the maximum strike put or the look back, look back spread call. All of these have a strike that is chosen from past stock prices. That's why it's called a look back option. They seem to be uh, quite profitable. They can be, but as a, as a matter of fact, what I mentioned just before, these options will also be much, much more expensive to buy in the first place. And finally, we have so-called Asian options. An Asian option is an option in which the strike or the price uh, to be compared with is given by the average of the underlying price. So for example, an average price call is the maximum of zero and then the average stock price over the lifetime of the option minus the strike. And the average strike call um, is just uh, this 
um, the corresponding uh, call version of the average price call. Okay. Now, in addition to the option types described above, there are numerous others such as rainbow options, in which the payout profile depends on relations between several underlines. We also have compound options for which the underlying itself is again an option. Digital options, in this case, you don't get the difference between the stock price and the underlying, now the strike. You only get one or zero. And we also have so-called barrier options, and they are similar to plain vanilla options, only with the difference that they only get active or they get inactive whenever an upper or lower limit of the underlying price is exceeded or hit. So they are sometimes called knock-in or knock-out products. And sometimes they are knocked in. They only become active after the stock price has um, risen above a certain threshold or they get knocked out if uh, the stock price goes down too much. Okay. Next, um, we will get to know the essential properties of forwards and futures. Forwards and futures are unconditional derivatives uh, in the sense that you don't have a right to pay or pay not, or not pay to exercise the derivative or not. It's not an option, but forwards and future contracts, if you enter such a forward or such a future contract, you need to pay. You need to pay. And then, last but not least, we'll have a look at interest swaps. Now, for all three types of financial instruments, we will discuss basic procedures for valuation. And in particular, we will learn about payout profiles, uh, pricing formulas, and then, of course, forwards and futures. They can also be used in hedging and in risk management. And actually, many times, um, companies will stick to the basic instruments, futures, forwards, and plain vanilla options. It's very... Uh, hard to see companies uh, using exotic options in risk management because usually they are just too complicated and difficult to price and not very liquid, but you will stick to your easy um, instruments, forwards, futures, plain vanilla options. Okay. Now, I would ask you to, to read through this, um, or if you've, maybe you know all this, if you've taken the risk management and financial options class with Professor Schumacher, uh, but I would ask you to read uh, these sections in the Albrecht Maurer um, textbook. And I think we are well underway. Um, let's stop here for today and um, please try to have a look at the next couple of formulas in which uh, in the end, I want to show you this result here. Where is it? This. The cost of carry price of a future and correspondingly of a forward contract. Um, we need to know what is the fair, what should the fair price of a forward or future uh, be. And in the end, we will see that uh, for a future contract, um, the cost of carry price of the future should be the spot price, KT, times 1 plus R. So the compounded spot price is the futures price. And you need to understand why this is the case, why um, we come up with this pricing formula for a futures contract and correspondingly for a forward contract. And uh, we will discuss this in detail next week. Okay, so let's stop here uh, for today. Um, I think we are, we're pr pretty fast this semester um, and we should uh, be done well before the uh, examination period. Um, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, just stay in the Zoom room um, for a minute and I'll stop the recording now. Thank you.